Alistair Crowley defined magic as a science and as an art, which is allowing us to make changes according to human willpower. Would it be correct to say that magic is researching and using human willpower, visualization and voice vibration? Ultimately, when we talk about magic, uh, magic can be manifested in different ways, but indeed I would have to agree with Mr. Crowley here that to practice magic it is important that we understand the universal laws which also govern magic um, and indeed it is also an art form just like playing a musical instrument it requires practice it requires skill it requires sensitivity to do it in an optimal fashion it's a rather delicate art in a way everybody can have a will or have a desire but to allow it to manifest without causing side effects disruptions or imbalances that is the tricky part that is in a way the art Similarly to everyone can move, but not everybody can dance gracefully. And when we're talking about magic, it is not just about manifesting the will. It's also very much about reaching the desired effect and not having undesired effect. And this requires understanding of the universal laws and also requires experimentation. Visualization is a method of magic just like using the voice is a method. To be able to perform magic in a good fashion it is indeed necessary that we explore ourselves because we don't have one will and this is what makes it very difficult for most people to practice magic because we have our thoughts, we have our imprints from society, um, we have our heart which has a lot of empathy and emotions, um, we have our instincts, we have our desires, we have our needs and all these generate little wills, little voices which are telling us what to do, what to think, how to act. And magic is ultimately following the will of your spirit. And for that we need to, in a way, harmonize all these other little voices, all these little wills, with the desires of our spirit. And only when we have reached this state of inner harmony, then we can speak with one voice, with one will, instead of with a cacophony of voices which makes it impossible for the rest of the universe to hear us, to understand us. So before we can practice magic, it would be good if we can practice self-control and uh, self-discipline and also understanding, knowing of ourselves. And certainly visualizations can help us with in a way having a preview of how things will go, how things will manifest. Also the visualization is often a very good test to see if we can truly comprehend the change, if we can really see what, what we desire entails. And only if we can have a complete vision of the whole transformation then we are ready to start a magical action. If we can only see a small part of it and cannot comprehend how the change will yeah create a domino effect of changes, then we're just doing something quite risky, unbalancing basically a healthy system by our actions. So visualization is a very powerful tool, but often when people visualize they use their mind and to be able to perform magic we need to use more than our mind. We need to use our mind, we need to use our ability to connect which is our heart, and we also need to connect our will center, our lower chakras. And only by aligning and cooperating with these three centers of power within ourselves can we manifest magic in a good way. 
Many people visualize or they dream or they wish things or they're afraid of things. Um, but this is in a way playing around, which is also fine. We can create images in the astral world using visualization, but also these images will simply evaporate again because there's not enough power and enough harmony in them. And only when we are ourselves perfectly aligned, these images can gain enough strength, enough power to ultimately manifest. The using of sound, including the, the voice, uh, is a method of projecting the energy which is within our body, out of our body. And we can use this by simply making sounds, by making certain rhythms, by using specific tones. And in this way we can summon elements or um, work with um, different planetary powers, for instance. But more importantly, our voice is a method of allowing the life force which is moving in our body to manifest outside of our bodies. So we can in a way project our power through our voice. So sound, whether we make it through our voice or for instance with a drum or a flute, has a magical ability of impacting our environment. And even if we don't make a sound but just blow we open our lung chakras and allow the energy to flow out with our breath. Our breath can also have a power and carry energies or messages to other people, for instance. But magic is not so much about form. There are, of course, many different ways to accomplish magic. We can perform rituals, um, we can work with um, all kinds of means like candles, uh, blessed objects, um, ritual circles, um, ritual labyrinths, but ultimately all these things are just methods to enforce our will, to make our will manifest. And if our will is not clear enough, if our vision is not clear enough, if our ability to connect is not good enough, we won't be able to practice magic. And many people actually practice magic more or less accidentally by really wanting something with all their being, with all their will. So you often hear stories of how uh, mothers can yeah, perform feats of supernatural strength when their baby is in danger. These are in a way also magical acts in in a way, moving uh, yeah, the, the world around you or mastery of your body, uh, which can happen if there's a complete alignment for your energy centers, which is also empowered by your spirit. I hope this answers the question a little bit about the nature of magic.